Father strengthens your faith, your faith when things doesn't go the way that you planned it. You often create plans because there's a planning dimension in everybody. There's a, there's a place in everybody that wants to plan. Even little children make plans. Little children make plans off of your plans. If you tell them, tomorrow I'm taking you to the park, they'll start planning for what's going to happen at the park. So when you come into this earth, everybody has a department in them that wants to plan. It wants to plan things. So what really is the breaking of the flesh? It's when you learn from the Spirit of God of how to manage your planning. You could plan something like this and plan something like that, but you must be open for the Spirit of God to show you how to do it. It's okay when your words of faith and your words of declaration has a turnaround from God. It's okay. And do you know that the Father watches you to see what is your reaction when I turn around your confession the way that I want it? When I decorate the picture of your proclamation the way that I want it? When I prophesy how I want to prophesy over your prophecy? You said that this was going to happen like this. You declare stuff. And I'm telling you, the only way for you to succeed mentally is you have to constantly lower yourself. You got to lower yourself. You can't be in the place talking about, you know, I, 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 I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. You got to say, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills. And don't be so quick to say what you're not going to do and what you're not going to be in, what you're not going to uh, go through because you want to be a perfect man. In Ephesians, it talked about how give the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, that you'll come to the perfect man. The Lord said in Matthew, I believe that chapter 5, be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. The perfection of the Father is meekness. Matthew chapter 11, I believe. Look at the latter part in the verses. He said, uh, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But look what it says right here in verse 11. Look what it says right here in verse 11. It says, Verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you understand what the rest is aiming at? Your mind. This mind be going places God doesn't want it to go. This mind does things God doesn't want it to do. This mind think things that God doesn't want it to think. Doesn't matter how anointed you become in life. Your brain is going to trespass against God. You have to bring it back into lowliness. Remember, Abraham is negotiating with God about why is he destroying Sodom and Gomorrah if there'd be 50 righteous. And then at the end, the Bible says he returned back to his place. That's the mental rest. The mental rest. Hebrews, I think that's chapter 4 and on, talked about there remaineth the rest. Be diligent to enter into the rest. Because the rest is when you stop wrestling with God. That's what the rest is. Rest is when you stop wrestling with God. You're no longer fighting and anticipating something that he didn't schedule for you. And there's no longer a battle with your will. You know, you can overthink things. I, uh, I wonder what they'll say. I wonder what they're going to do. I wonder how I'm going to look. I'm a, all of that is BS. It been BS because at the day of judgment, only you going to stand by yourself. You're not standing with nobody. So it don't matter if your co-worker like you, your mama didn't like you, your dad didn't like you, your wife didn't like you, your husband didn't like you, your children didn't like you. It don't matter if your senator didn't like you, your neighbor didn't like you. All that's going to matter when you leave your body, did God like me? That's all that's going to matter. It's so much emphasis on different things. There's a reason why the Lord told you don't worry and don't fear. Because what are you fearing and what are you worrying about? 
If all is well with you and the Holy Spirit, don't you think he going to make all be well concerning the things around you? What is it to fret? The only place of concern that should be for anybody is when there is chaos between you and God. When the spirit of God and you are at odds with each other, that's when you get fearful. That's when you get nervous. That's when you get worried. Divine worry is when you are out of place with the spirit of the Lord, and that's when you get worried. When you're in the right place with the spirit of the Lord, you don't get worried. So the mental healing, mental healing is when you recognize that God has given you power over your mentality. Mental healing. And for you to receive mental healing, this is where you start uh, truly becoming advancements. You become an advancement in your mentality, in your anointing, in your graces, because there's no longer a wrestling match between you and the Lord. That's how you enter into rest. Look at verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So Satan gives people yokes so that you never get to Jesus' yoke. And then even, watch this here, even when you get to King Jesus' yoke, Satan is still going to offer you yokes to sidetrack you so that you'll no longer have enthusiasm about Jesus' yoke. So even when you take the yoke of King Jesus, Satan is still going to be offering different yokes to you to see if Satan could wean you off of the yoke that you received from the Lord. Did you know that the more that you're in the spirit, the more distant the voice of the enemy becomes? Being in the spirit is what? It is where you have lowered and laid down your plans and you're pursuing the Lord's plans. That's when you, nobody can enter into the spirit. I'm in the spirit. No, no, you enter the spirit when you lay down your plans and you're pursuing the Lord's plans. You can't, watch this here. You can't even lay down your plans and just stay put. You have to pursue the Lord's plans. Okay, I'm going to lay down my plans. I'm going to wait for God. No, 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 you can't even do that. Did you know that waiting on the Lord has a time frame to it? You don't wait on the Lord in the time of pursuit. You wait on the Lord after you have pursued and you have gotten done what you received when you pursued him. So now you waited on him for the results that he promised you if you would do it. So when somebody waits on God, it is not them in the place of waiting on God for a strategy. It is them waiting on God to show them the results because they already received the strategy. Waiting on God is not you not knowing what to do. Waiting on God is that you did what you were supposed to do. Now you are expecting the deliverance with the right attitude. You're expecting the harvest with the right mentality. So oftentimes somebody's saying, I'm going to wait on God and you're in the time of pursuit. So there's a imbalance. Imbalance is deceitfulness hidden in a form of godliness. Imbalance is deceitfulness hidden in a form of godliness. So According to you, I'm waiting, but this is not the equation that you're postured in by God. He's pitting you on the track. You're going inside of the sauna to relax, but he got you on the track. He wants you to run, run after me. But you saying, no, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to take a nap. And I know God going to fight my battles. But you're in a place of fighting the good fight of faith. So you're in the place of running after him 
not you saying, I'm going to let him fix this and everything going to be all right. God puts you in a posture sometimes and you on the track field. You on the track, but you're not, you, you don't think you're on the track. You think that you're on a recliner. You think that you're on a couch. And so if you say, I'm waiting on God, it is, it is a, a, a deception from the enemy because the enemy knows that you can't locate what you're waiting for until you pursue him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I hope you understand everything I'm saying here. I hope you understand everything I'm saying here. I hope you understand. Esther was not in the place of waiting on God to reach King Ahasuerus. Esther was in the place of pursuing God for 72 hours. So if 72 hours go by and she say, I know the Lord going to deal with his heart because I'm the Lord's woman and I love the Lord and he knows how to fight my battles. That's not the equation for victory. You could have an idea of triumph, but a strategy of defeat. Did you catch what I just said? You can have an idea of triumph, but a strategy of defeat. Your imagination can be champion, but your road map is loser. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter's power is not in sleeping. Peter's power is in watching and praying. So even around the God that created him, Peter is powerless because he has an idea of disciple, but a strategy of sleeping. And while he chooses the strategy, it disconnects him from So why was Mary Magdalene so on point? Because it wasn't just idea. It was intimacy. So the idea she had stayed pure and stayed in the producing mode because of the intimacy. You can have an idea of being strong but the strategy is carrying weakness. So before you know it, you operating as a weak person all over again. It's not that the power of God is not able to contain you. It's just you're not operating in the container of the power of God. This something else. This something else. Look, come unto me. You notice what the Lord is saying in verse uh, 28. The Lord said, not saying I'm going to come after you. He said, come unto me. Because I need to know. I already know I can help you. I just need to know, do you want to be helped? Come unto me. That means talk. That means voice. That means express. If you are in a position and you don't know what is going on, come unto me and talk with me about it. Talk with me. Express. Communicate. Say something. Don't be silent and just wait to the day of judgment to find out. Depart from me. I never knew you. Come unto me. And when you say, I will give you rest. I'll give you the rest of the equation. 
I'll give you the rest of what you were searching for. I'll give you the rest of your inheritance. I'll give you the rest of the clarity that you need. I'll give you the rest of the instruction. I'll give you the rest of the details. I'll give you the rest of the discernment. Because you only could discern some people. You can't discern that person. You, can't, you, only, you only follow me when, when, when it's, it's an instruction that you like. But what about the instruction that goes against what you planned? You said that you're about to go jog for 30 minutes outside, but I'm telling you, I don't want you to go outside and go jog. And you done got the workout clothes on, and you already at the doorstep, and you get outside, and you, you, you still wrestling. You start running for five minutes, and you feel like I should go back home. I shouldn't be jogging. But, but you say, no, 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 I, this goes against my plans. I'm going to tell you something about being led by the Spirit. There will come a time in everybody's life when you're being led by the Spirit that you had already planned something that you deem was so innocent. It's not affecting God in no way, shape, or form. And the Spirit of God will go there and stop you. And the Spirit of God will say, let me see if they know my voice when I go against their plans. They, they know my voice when they have an enemy and somebody fighting them. I'm going to give you victory. I'm going to give you. They know my voice when they're going through tough times. I tell them I'm going to give you money. I'm going to give you increase. They know my voice when they get sick. And I say, I'm going to heal you. But let me see if they know my voice when I go against what they planned. You are already on the highway just five minutes from your arrival. And the Holy Spirit saying, no, turn back around. You like I already drove 45 minutes here. And the Holy Spirit like turn the 45 minutes back and drive 50 minutes back to where you supposed to be. Can you hear God's voice? When he's going against something that you have already planned, you got the baby shower set up. But the baby shower set up, you got the balloons up, and then the Holy Spirit say, I don't want nobody in your face. I didn't tell you to do this baby shower. People calling you on the phone. Hey, you know, I'm just two, I'm 20 minutes out. You know, I just da 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 da. And everybody, and the Holy Spirit say, I, I, I don't want you to do this. You're going to have to cancel it. These are the places where people disconnect from the Holy Ghost. But I'm warning you. I'm giving you the advantage. I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit goes against your plans at one point that you actually believe that he gave to you. I mean, you believe that he gave it to you. You felt that he gave it to you. You suggested that he gave it to you. It was in your belly that it came from God. It was confirmation. Oh, it's confirmation. Oh, it's confirmation. And all the confirmation becomes a confrontation with God seeing, are you really in submission to me? Because I already know that you done put all your energy in this direction. But I'm telling you, this is not my will. Stop. You don't believe it. Okay, so let me ask you something. What happened to Balaam that morning? He woke up and he put all of his energy into going with the men. He put all his energy into going towards Balak. He put all the energy into going on the path with them and traveling with them and taking the donkey with him. He put all of his mind, his intent, his motive, his energy, his enthusiasm, his livelihood, his servanthood, his submission, his obedience, his cooperation. He put all of it into going on this path. And here the Lord trying to stop him. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. And the story of Balaam is one of the most prophetic stories in the Bible because you see that the Holy Spirit will be attempting to stop you and your face not falling off. 
It's no crazy thing happening to you. Your fingers not curling up. Your eyes not blinking in the side of your head. Your ears not falling off. Your body is still working. I mean, your blood's still flowing. You could still go use the bathroom. You still got a tongue in your mouth. You still got nostrils. You still got your hearing. Still got your senses. Still got all of your abilities. Nothing bizarre is happening to your physical body. But yet, God is standing right in your path telling you to stop. Imagine the story of Balaam is in the word of God because the Lord wanted you when you read it to understand I could be going the wrong route with God favoring me and he being merciful to me. But I don't know that I'm activating my death because this path that I'm on that is of sin, it is waging death. The wages for these sins, the wages for this path, the wages for this road, this wages for this roadmap, the wages of this D GPS is that I lose my soul. So this is what's going on with Balaam. God doesn't want to kill Balaam. But Balaam has picked the path of God kill me. God doesn't want to strike. Balaam with the sword, but Balaam has made a decision, Lord, strike me with the sword. And, and watch this here. I'm going to show you something. The Lord loved Balaam so much that the Lord said, I'm going to affect your transportation. Oh, my gosh. And, and this, this is what some of you all don't understand. When God wants to get your attention, sometimes he going to affect your donkey. See, your donkey today is your Honda. It's your Dodge. It's your BMW, your Mercedes. It's your Toyota. Your, your donkey today is your transportation aspect. What's empowering you to get there? What's empowering you to locate it? Your transportation come on and eat whack. How many times have you got an increase in money? And when you got the increase in money, you want it to go somewhere. A graduation, you want to go to a family reunion. You want to see something, have something, experience something. But isn't it crazy that months later you come into a drought? You come into a financial problem with all that you have? And guess what happens? When that takes place, you don't even recognize why was I planning to do all this with the money? So God had saw that I was going into a famine, but six months ago, I couldn't see that because I had just got the financial miracle. So I had just got more money. I felt good. I felt like things was opening up for me. But here six months later, I couldn't see that there was a famine coming to my life. You got to understand the Joseph anointing. Remember, there's seven years of abundance. And seven years of famine. And so the people, when seven years of abundance come, everybody is happy. Everybody is excited. Everybody is jumping and leaping. But they can't see the seven years of famine. I'm telling you that this goes on in real life. And we're not even dealing with finances. This goes on in real life. Sometimes you can't see that the good times that you have in now, there are some bad times on the way, but you've got to steward the good times correctly so that God could step in when the bad times come and get you out by his mighty power. Because when the enemy comes at you with a, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord going to raise the standard because you was following the spirit of the Lord, even in the good times, even when there was no bad news, even when there was no bad bodily health, even when there was no bad financial report, even when there was no bad dealings with people and enemies around you, you got to follow the stewardship and be faithful, be faithfully led by the Holy Spirit so that when the times of evil come, he could get you out. Imagine having an idea of virtue, but a strategy of venom. Imagine having an idea of being God's king, his man, 
but having a strategy of Ahab. Having a strategy of Cain. Having a strategy of a peasant. The image of your mind of greatness can remain an image in your mind until it becomes an image in your fruit. It's like it never existed. The image of your mind of being great and mighty can remain an image in your mind. But you didn't succeed with that image until that image comes to your fruit. Where was the image of God targeted in the woman, Eve's fruit? She was already taught the image of God mentally. Because she even told the serpent, God said that we shall not eat of this, we'll surely die. So she has the image in her mind. But the fruit is what's dealt with. And when the fruit image is tampered with, the image of God that's in the mind declines until the person is blind. Blindness in the spirit world is deactivation from divine works. Blindness in the spirit world is robbery of revelation. Blindness in the spirit world is blockage from blessing. Cancellation of your cleansing. Blindness in the spirit world is separation from your sanity, your soundness, your salvation. Blindness in the spirit world is animosity with the anointed. Animosity with the anointed. Animosity with the anointed.